This video shows you how to complete the Certificate of Capacity slash Certificate of Fitness, Treating Physiotherapist or Psychologist. In this video, we will refer to these forms as the Certificate and use the term person to reflect all injured people, including injured workers. The Certificate is separated into four sections. At the top of the Certificate, you firstly have to identify if the person has a claim for workers' compensation or CTP. In Section 1, this is where you reflect a person's capacity or fitness for work. Just because a person's position or employment is not currently available does not mean that they have no capacity. In the current environment of COVID-19, it is imperative that a person who has capacity is certified with capacity to work, so they remain work ready, connected and, where required, receive assistance in returning to work. For example, this may include return to work assistance from a rehabilitation provider. The next review date identifies the time frame when you anticipate the person's capacity is likely to have changed. The CTP and Workers' Compensation legislation allows for a certificate to be provided for a period greater than 28 days in special circumstances. This, however, is not appropriate if changes in the person's capacity are anticipated within that time period. If the next review date is greater than 28 days, please outline the reasons why in the comments box. Additional comments about capacity and limitations can also be made in the box provided. You will also fill in your treating health discipline, provide your signature and contact details. In Section 2, you or the injured person record the injured person's personal details before the injured person provides their consent to the Certificate of Capacity slash Certificate of Fitness section of the form. Section 3. Additional details. These are optional for completion, however, it is encouraged as it will assist the insurer make the best decision for the worker and assist the employer to make good choices about work assigned. The Capacity for Activities section information. The practitioner provides additional information about a person's capacity for work, which may be informed by activities the worker is currently able to undertake at home. It is essential to quantify their capacity using repeatable, reliable measures. In this example, Jack has a work-related lower back injury. He works predominantly on the floor of a warehouse with some administrative work each day and drives 20 minutes to work. This section demonstrates the weight that can be lifted or carried, the length of time sitting can be tolerated, the length of time standing can be tolerated, the weight that can be pushed or pulled on a trolley, what the capacity to bend, twist and squat is and how long the person can drive for before requiring a rest. In this example, Jack was certified with 30 minutes for driving ability, given driving places more stress on the injury site than sitting in an ergonomic chair. Other. The last box is for any further considerations you would like to provide. We will now look at how this section is completed for a person with a psychological injury. In this example, Jasmine has anxiety with underlying depression, which is triggered due to conflict with her line supervisor. Her condition has raised concerns regarding her concentration. Jasmine lives 10 minutes from her workplace and often takes the bus as she does not like to drive. Again, it is essential to accurately quantify her capacity using repeatable, reliable measures. For example, how long Jasmine can drive for before requiring a rest due to poor concentration. Other may include not to be alone with person X in the workplace. The last box is for comments regarding any other considerations, such as the person's memory, ability to do regular activities slash maintain energy levels, or how they tolerate everyday frustrations. This section assists all stakeholders to understand what functions can be performed and helps to identify tasks and employment within the individual's capacity. 
Where known, it is helpful to provide the medical practitioner details. This is where you obtain the person's written consent for the form and the information on it to be exchanged with other parties such as their medical practitioner or insurer for the purpose of managing the person's injury and workers' compensation or motor accident injury claim. If you are completing the certificate via telehealth, it may be difficult for you to obtain a signature here. Please be aware the certificate is valid without the person's written consent. With the person's consent, for example, obtaining it verbally or by email, a copy may be provided to the employer, medical practitioner and rehabilitation provider to facilitate communication and successful rehabilitation. You do not complete this section. Section 4 is a declaration completed by the person prior to sending the certificate to the insurer or employer noting whether they have engaged in any paid employment since the last certificate was submitted and they have not yet declared it to the insurer. Upon completion, it is advised to check you have completed all the relevant sections of the certificate thoroughly. Provide the completed certificate to the person. It is their responsibility to provide it to the insurer, although you can do this on their behalf if asked. With the person's consent, a copy may be provided to the employer, medical practitioner and rehabilitation provider to facilitate communication and successful rehabilitation. You may need to refer the injured person back to the medical practitioner for a review of the overall management plan if they are not progressing as anticipated. Where required, revise the certificate as the person's injury, condition or capacity changes. The Certificate of Capacity slash Fitness can be downloaded from the CIRA website or incorporated into your practice software. The CIRA Workers' Compensation Claims Management Guide is for all stakeholders in the New South Wales Workers' Compensation System to better navigate the legislative and regulatory landscape, providing a one-stop shop for New South Wales Workers' Compensation Claims Management information. For further information, go to cira.newsouthwales.gov.au.